Hi, I'm Kevin Torres and I'm going to present you the layer library. The script is rather simple in the ID, but it can become a very useful tool that I hope you will use very often. It's quite similar to the animation presets and these allow you to save several properties of a single layer into a preset and you can then apply this preset to other layers that already exist. The layer library, it's a bit the same ID. Basically, you can create a preset for several properties, but on multiple layers. And then you can either apply this preset to layers that already exist, or you can let the layer library create all the layers for you. When you will use it for the first time, this is going to be empty, but you can create your own uh, presets and you can organize them as you wish in folders. I'm going to show you how you create those later. Now let's have a look at the presets I created. If you select one and place the mouse over the search icon, you can see what is inside the preset. So here I have a camera, a light and two solids. Let's empty this composition and double click on the preset to load it. And it's pretty quick, it's going to create all the layers at once. Here I have a 2D layer on which I want to put an effect later. And I've got a light, a camera and a 3 layer for a wall. So let's delete that and have a look at another type of preset. Here I've got an, a preset for element 3D. If we have a look, there's a solid with the effect and a null object that was actually created by elementary. So it's an anchor and well, let's have a look. Let's load the preset first. So here we have element. The main difference with animation presets is that all that is stored inside element in the scene setup. This is not going to be saved by the preset. But if you just reload it and then move the null object that was created, you can see that the effect is already linked to the null object. Now let's see how fast you can create a scene. So I'm going to launch this preset here. Then I'm going to select the effect. And the good thing is that I can now apply this preset to the layer created there. So let's go back into the scene and load any model. Now we have the anchor that can move the object and in just two clicks I was able to create the scene and now I can actually concentrate on the actual work and start building my scene and working on it. So you could say that it would be just as easy to save the project and load it but not really because if I now load this preset in a composition with other dimensions, you can see that the layers are going to scale to the uh, new composition. So it's really going to adapt to your, your composition. Now let's have a look at how you create those presets. Here I have six 3D layers uh, placed as a box and I've got uh, an expression in their opacity so that they become transparent when they are not facing the camera. So to create a preset, you need first to unlock the library folder. The reason you need to actually unlock it is that when you will try to delete or overwrite a preset, the layer library is not going to give you any warning on the file operation. So every time you will launch library and you want to create a new preset, you will need to actively unlock it. And this way you agree that there is not going to be any warning given. Now first select in which folder you want to create the item and I want to call this one box. There's already a preset here but it's going to be overwritten. So if I click on plus, okay I get an error message. That's because I've only selected layers here and not properties and by default the layer library tries to force you to save uh, properties and not the whole layer and I'm going to talk about this later. Right now, I've changed a lot of things uh, on those layers, so I really want to save them all. And to do that, just press Shift when clicking on the button. So I'm going to prove you that it's actually working. So I'm going to delete this uh, item. Now click on the layer and press Shift. Okay, I just created the item here. Now let's have a look at what uh, happens when you load this in another composition. I'm going to create a camera first and the box again. Oh, uh, maybe I need a light too. I don't have a preset for a light, I really should have one. 
okay so i need to reset the position as well to have it uh, centered now i'm going to apply the same preset i used to this camera and what you can see is that we have actually the same view between both compositions and as i said that's because the layer library is going to try to adapt uh, the preset to your composition but well it's not that convenient because if now i load the element preset here and put the chair again and do the same in this composition you can see that the size of the chair uh, compared to the size of the box is not the same and that's because well the layer library adapts to your composition but the plugins don't but you can still uh, it's not really a problem because if you press shift when double clicking on the item it's going to create all the layers by keeping the original dimensions of the layers so well here the camera needs to be moved a bit but now we've actually got exactly the same scene in both compositions uh, because we asked the layer library not to adapt to the composition. Here I saved uh, the complete layers, but now let's have a look at saving only a property. For example, there I've got a mask with a keyframed expansion so that it closes. So I want to save uh, the mask. So be careful, don't select a sub property of the mask because it's only going to save the you know the, the sub property so you need to select the whole mask here and i'm going to type mask oh wait i'm going to select the layer folder first and then mask so it's been created there let's compare this um, preset with this one so if you right click on it it's going to open a window with the characteristics of the preset what is stored inside so in the box preset, we really have everything uh, about the layer. So we have the transform, really everything was saved. And you can also see here, the opacity has an, exp an expression and you can read the expression there. If we look at this one, we have the bare necessity, basically. It's only the mask that was saved. And you can see that there are keyframes on the expansion and you can read the value of the keyframe here. So now, if I don't select any layer, and I, well, let's get rid of the mask actually. Now, if I double click on the uh, preset, it's going to create the mask and we can have a look at its expansion to check everything is fine. All right, so it's basically the same animation here. But once again, you can apply this preset to, for example, this uh, layer. And because we only saved some properties, is going to the layer is going to keep its position and you see th there's only the mask that was added to the layer one thing is that once again the mask was actually um, adapted to the size of the layer so if you press shift and load it then the mask is going to keep its original size and position and the reference for the position is the top left corner just just because that's that's a reference for after effects so this layer only contains uh, one solid, so we can apply it directly to this layer because you know there's only one solid store here. There's one solid selected there, so the layer library knows uh, to which layer it should apply the preset. But now for the box, we actually have six layers uh, stored. So if we want to apply the box preset to this uh, image here, we need to rename it so that library knows which of the layer preset it should use. So if we want to put it and uh, at the top of the box, you need to rename it top and then launch the preset and it disappears but that's because, all right, it's right there, it's at the top of the box. If you want it at the front, obviously, name it front. And I'm not inventing the names, it's just, it's the names of the layers that are here. So let's give it a try. Okay, and now it's basically uh, well, the front of the box. One thing that is really in 
interesting with these uh, property presets is that you can actually use them to apply expressions with controllers. For example, here I've got uh, the position of this layer that has a wiggle and the wiggle actually uses two sliders which are on a null controller. So you can see that the position uh, moves here. So I'm going to create a preset at the root of the library. So I, you need to click on the dot to do that instead of clicking on the, on the folder. Now I need to save the position and the effects of the null controller and then call that wiggle, hit plus. So I have the preset here and if I have a look at what's inside, there's only the effects of the null and only the position with its expression for the solid. So now I'm going to get rid of those two layers and I'm going to apply the preset to the light to have a wiggle on the light. But as the target here was a solid and this is a light, you need to tell library that this is actually the target. Otherwise it's going to look for a solid to apply the um, preset to. So now just double click on the preset and well, let's have a look. Now we have the position of the light that actually wiggles and the wiggle is still controlled by this. And basically you can also apply that to the camera if you call that target. Let's have a look. So well, it's a bit more difficult to see because there's nothing in the scene, but if we have a look at the position in the graph, we can see that we have the wiggle and Basically, this is still uh, going to affect it. And still, if you don't want to apply that to a particular layer, just load the preset and everything is going to be recreated. So I hope all this gave you a good overview of the layer library and I really hope you will enjoy using it. But really write me uh, to tell me what you think about it because there are still some details. I'm not really sure how it should work. For example, right now, uh, you need to be careful because if you load it into, well, if you create a preset in a composition with a square pixel aspect ratio and then load the preset in a non-square uh, composition, you may have some issues. So I'm going to work on this with the updates, but really send me some feedback to tell me what you would like to change and what you really like.